Welcome to MacroCode. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. So today we are going to proceed with our video. So we are on day 16 of .NET series. So if you are new to this channel, you have been developing a mobile app on .NET Maui. And as you can see on my screen, this is our app that we have been developing. So I'm, try I'm trying to launch. Let's see. So on our previous video, we actually did a video about uh, how to capture a photo on .NET Maui and we captured an employee photo. So we left it at some point where we were supposed to preview the photo after we have captured. So in today's video, we are going to proceed with that uh, video. So as you can see, if I click new, we add a section where you can be able to capture the photo. So let's see. So this is my uh, screen. So you can be able to capture the uh, country, uh, constituency, location, sublocation, village. Uh, you enter the name of the employee. You also enter the middle name. You enter the last name and even the email address. So after you enter those details, then you are supposed to capture the uh, photo. So you click the capture. Then it will give you a camera to load the camera. Then you can be able to capture the photo. So if you just uh, do that and you click OK, then we were supposed to view the photo on this section. So as you can see, our photo is not displaying. So we left this uh, the previous video at this point. So if you are following this uh, series, uh, please comment down below so that you can be able to know uh, whether the video is interesting. And if you are a re returning subscriber, uh, uh, thank you for supporting the channel. So for those who are watching uh, videos and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing so that you can be able to uh, help us reach more people. We notice on our videos, 90% uh, of you guys are watching our videos and you are not subscribing. So don't be uh, one of those people. So as you can see, uh, we are done uh, some of the code. So if I just run through how our app looks like, so this is our employee app. We have the add employee view model. So this is how our view model uh, looks like. So we are able to load the data of our constituencies. Uh, we are able to load everything here from our database. Then you can be able to edit or add an employee. Then now what you are doing is to add an employee capture uh, that is photo. So this is our our form, we have the uh, load countries and we select them, constituencies, location, uh, sub-locations, villages, then our first name, we are binding. So you can see how we are binding the data. Then uh, under this section now, we have a button, as you can see, that uh, help us to, to capture the photo. So this is our button, capture employee photo command, which will actually initiate the uh, capturing of the photo. Then we have an uh, image section whereby after we load the, after we capture the photo, we are supposed to preview the photo here. So if we just check on our command, for those who are new, you can see this is our command. So it will actually uh, do the do capture employee photo, and this should ensure that the uh, the media is actually uh, media picker is actually uh, supported. So if you come to our ca do capture employee photo, this is where now we capture the photo and you are supposed to load the path of the photo. That is the complete path of the photo. So from our previous video, we actually reached at this point. And uh, uh, as you can see, our photo was not displaying. So today we are going to determine as to why our photo is not uh, displaying. So if I just do a capture again, so you can see it will uh, come there, then load the camera. Then if I click capture photo, it will load the photo. So this is how it is. So if I proceed, you can see it is uh, loading the photo and this is the path. Data user zero com dot company dot company name dot employee app files. Then uh, the, the, the photo that is this photo is actually the is actually the path of the the folder of the photos and this is the photo name. So this is now the complete path of the photo. So this complete part of the photo is actually a string, as you can see here. 
we are actually capturing the string and we have a boolean to indicate whether the photo has been captured or not so we are displaying the image section here this image section you can see uh, is visible it is visible is actually being binded here so that you can be able to know whether the photo has been captured so that you can display this uh, section so that is it uh, for based on what we did so let me see why our screen is uh, Let me just close. So that is it for how we did it. So today, I think we must be having an issue with our load photo async so that we are not uh, able to preview the image. So uh, I've just done some uh, small tweaks. So these are our functions look like load photo. We are passing the photo that we have captured. Then we read the stream then uh, i declared the byte uh, image data where we will be adding the data from this uh, section so we read the stream then we add it so we have our folder path where we combine the folder path with app directory then uh, the the photo the photo uh, folder so you can say emp employee photo so we had done this uh, yesterday so this is the photo this is the folder where you need the photo to be stored so it will check if the photo, if the path exists, then it will actually create the, the folder path. So the, this is the new file. So the file name will now be the folder path. This uh, uh, path with the file name that has been provided by our photo. But now you can also give it the name that you want. So for example, I can say variable the string variable. You can say uh, im, uh, emp file name. So this is the name of our file. So you can, it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't uh, have that uh, you need to use the file name of the photo, but you can provide the name that you want. So I'll just say uh, employee photo jpg. But now uh, when you are doing this, be cautious so that the photo, the photo name should not be the same if uh, you are capturing multiple employees. So you can actually add uh, maybe date to the name. So I can say, uh, or I, I just uh, maybe say date time. Uh, or I, I just do uh, GUID. So you can provide the date or you can just do a GUID so that you can uh, new GUID. So I can do that. Then I can append the, the name of my photo so then i'll just do m file name i'll replace this with this one so there's there's a lot of ways you can actually rename your file but ensure the name of the file is not the same if you're capturing multiple employees because you'll have one photo for all the employees so you can do the date time or you can just uh, do a good so after you have done that our new file now that will be saved will be our path which is employee photo then our file name uh, from this uh, section then we need now to write a stream so we are writing uh, the stream uh, we are writing the the file to our uh, our file name here so what we missed yesterday is this line so i'm going to uh, comment it so that you can be able to see so using variable stream two. so i'm j I've just declare this is equals to new memory stream image data remember we actually copied all our data into this so we have an a, a, an array of uh, image data then you are going to write this uh, data the, this uh, stream we are going to write this stream to so change this to stream to then we write this stream to to new stream so this new stream will actually write it to our new file here so if we launch our our app we should be able to, whenever we capture a photo, we should be able to preview it. So this is now a complete uh, code. So then it will return our new file. So the new file will actually be the path. So this is now still the path. Complete path of the, of the photo. So this is the complete path of the photo. So this is now a complete path of the photo. So if I just come to our app, I'll just edit one of our employee who has data. So if I just say capture, it will come here. Then if I proceed, 
it will give me the camera. So I'll just uh, click OK. If I capture the screen, then I click OK. So you can see uh, we have our photo here being supplied to our function. So this is our function. Let go to definition. So I'll just uh, click here so that we see what you have done. So if I proceed, it will come here, you can see. So if I proceed again, our new file name, you can see it has now added the GUID plus the employee photo dot JPG. So that is our file name. So you can give the file name what you also like. So then it will proceed, I read the streams. Uh, you can see these the bytes. Then it will actually write that to our file now. Then it will return our path. So this is our path. So if I just proceed, it will give us the complete path. So you can see the complete path. We have the we have the employee photo, which is our folder. Then the name of our our the name of our file. That is the employee photo file name. Then if we proceed, this name we, remember we had binded it to our our form here. So this is the employee path folder. So this is the source of our file. So the image should now be displaying on our screen. So, so you can see this is the image. So the image is now displaying and you can alter the size of this image. So based on the height, so you can say here maybe for 50, then you can be able to see it has actually increased. So this is how you can uh, do that. So assuming you have now, you are, we have the employee data, you can see the country name, uh, constituency, Maridadi, Marinda, Coros, macro code, updated email, and even the uh, date of birth. So then we have captured the photo. So to save this photo, what we need to do, come to our employee database. For those who are new, this is how we defined our, our tables. So we have our table for constituency, country, employee, locations, products, sublocations, and villages. So for our employee, um, our employee table, we are going now to define the photo. So the photo will be the string. So it will store the string of our file. Eh? So we can say this is a string. Then we can now save the, we can say uh, emp photo. So we can say emp photo. So that is the employee photo. So if you want to save now this, this will be our, our, our photo, or we can just say employee, employee photo. So we want to save this string that you have just captured, the complete string to this image. So what we need to do, come to our add employee view model, then on our add function. So we, add, we have our function here. So if you don't know how to do that, consider watching some of our previous videos so that you can be able to understand. So this is our add employee command. So on our add employee command, you are checking if you have selected the village. If not, then it will give you an error. So to, to, to proceed, you are going now to say uh, emp, emp, so em data. Then you say dot employee photo. So we assign it now the path. So we assign this path that we have been uh, uh, selecting. So you see this path employee photo that we have actually retrieved from this list. So I'll do away with this because you already have know what we have doing. So I'll just take this and now append it to our to our emp photo. So if I do that, then this will be our employee photo will be given the name of this uh, file. So if I just do that and uh, click relaunch our app, then you are expecting our data to be saved with this uh, with this uh, photo. So if I do that, let's see. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and watching our previous videos. So if I click on one of our record, then uh, you can see our photo is not there, but these other details are, are being retrieved. So we need to save this photo so that whenever we just edit our data, we also need to see the photo that we had captured. So I'll click that, then capture the photo. Then if I click OK, I'll just do away with our breakpoints. Then it will give me the photo. So I'll just uh, provide a breakpoint on our on our ad employee here so that you're able to see the kind of data that is being supplied. So if I click Save, you can see it has come here. We have our employee path. You see it is this all uh, long uh, string. 
So if we, I just proceed, our EMP data should be updated. You can see we have the email address, the employee photo with the complete path, the first name, the ID, last name, middle name, and the village ID. So if I just proceed, our data has been saved. So it will take us to the list. Now, one thing to note, we have saved our photo. So if I just click on edit again, I should, you can see I'm not uh, seeing my photo here. So why? This is because we need to ensure that whenever you edit the, the whenever we edit the record, we need to supply the employee, this complete employee uh, path with the path of the photo. So what we need to do, you come to our, our constructor at the top here, where we were checking the ID being supplied. So if an ID is greater than zero, that means the record is being edited. So the, the, it, will, it will come inside here, then uh, retrieve the employee record based on the ID that has been supplied. Then it will actually bind the data to our employee details. So what we need to do, we need to now come here and say our employee, our complete employee photo path is equals to, we get the data from our employee details, then uh, it should be replaced by the employee photo. So it will actually, if you are editing the file, if you are editing the record and you had saved the file, so you can now append the complete file uh, path to our uh, stream. So if we just uh, try again, so let me just stop our app, then relaunch, it will actually give us the, the path name of our, of our photo. So let's see. So if I just edit our record now, you can see our ID is zero, so it will not uh, get inside, it will jump. So then it will also come back. Let me just proceed. You can see it has come back. So our ID is six. So you can see it is six. So if I just proceed, it will go inside our, our table, get the employee record based on the ID, which is six. So this is the data that it has uh, given us. So you can see it has given us the email address, the employee photo, file name, ID, last name, middle name, and you can see now we had saved our employee photo. So we already have a complete path of this uh, photo. So we are going to assign it to our complete employee uh, photo. So if we just proceed, it will assign the complete employee photo with our complete path of the photo. So if we just uh, continue, then our screen should be able to, our file should be able to be have seen. You can see when we edit now our, our, our our record, then we should be able to see the record based on the path that we saved. So that is how you manage the photo on your on your app based on the records that you are saving. Now, some of you guys are asking, what happens whenever we need to submit that photo, maybe via an API to the server? So if you're interested on how we need, you can do that guys, then comment down below. But that is it for today and see you on our next uh, series. Bye.